we should look at a different picture of what's going on in Iran. Because all of us, anybody who's been near a TV set or a newspaper in the past couple of weeks has seen the picture of Nada, the young woman who was shot down in the streets. And while the death of any, anyone is certainly a tragedy, we can also clearly see that that picture was used to distort, to influence, and as a propaganda tool to win sympathy under the guise of human rights for the protesters in Iran. These protests have been sold to us as if there were a, was a, sort of a spontaneous response to an election. These came out of nowhere. It was built by Twitter and Facebook. And I think that if we scratch beneath the surface just a little bit, we see that the truth is very, very different. More than two years ago, John Bolton, who was then the Bush administration's ambassador to the UN, told the London Telegraph that a US military attack on Iran was a possibility, but it would be the last option after economic sanctions and after attempts to create a popular revolution had failed. The CIA and the uh, National Endowment for Democracy's plans for a green revolution in Iran didn't just happen two weeks ago, three weeks ago. They were announced two, more than two years ago. Brian Ross and Richard Esposito told ABC News that the CIA has received secret presidential approval to mount a covert black operation to destabilize the Iranian government. On May 27th, uh, the London Telegraph also reported, Mr. Bush has signed an official document endorsing CIA plans for a propaganda and disinformation campaign intended to destabilize and eventually topple the theocratic rule of the mullahs. This was just a couple of days after the announcement by our friend, Mr. Bolton. On June 29th of last year, Seymour Hersh reported that Congress had agreed to a request from President Bush to fund a major escalation of covert operations against Iran. And these operations, Bush sought up to $400 million. And again, they were designed to destabilize the country's religious leadership. Now, a lot of this destabilization is being done through an organization called the National Endowment for Democracy. Um, in the Bulgarian elections of 1990, the uh, National Endowment for Democracy spent one and a half million dollars to defeat the Socialist Party. And when that failed, the NED backed opposition groups that took to the streets and caused chaos and protests for months until they finally, found, finally forced the government to resign. So this sort of thing is not new. Between 1990 and 1992, the National Endowment for Democracy financed an organization called the Cuban American National Foundation, uh, an anti-Castro group based in Miami, which in turn funded Luis Posada Carriles, a known terrorist who was responsible for the bombing of a Cuban airliner in 1976 that killed 73 people. During the Clinton and Bush administration, the National Endowment for Democracy was in Haiti working with the opposition against President Aristide. And the National Endowment for Democracy was in Venezuela financing the opposition to President Hugo Chavez, including groups that were involved in the attempted coup of 2002. Another recipient of NED money is the National Iranian American Council, which has received $300,000 in the past three years. Another, or another recipient of NED funds is the, and I'm gonna mispronounce this, excuse me, the Abdoraman Boraman Foundation. Thank you. Um, this, the, the mainstream press describes this organization as a, uh, a, a grassroots human rights organization and talks about their tireless organizing 
Uh, one article I read said that their work is carried out by small groups of civil rights activists working largely unnoticed and without much outside help. And you, saw, you got the picture of these folks working out of a shabby little office on a shoestring budget. Their headquarters is in Washington, D.C. And uh, in the past four years, they've received $345 million from the National Endowment for Democracy in order to facilitate regime change in Iran. The current administration, just in case you thought that there had been a change with the change of administrations, the current administration has budgeted an additional $80 million in financing the NED, um, according to the White House website, and another $699 million for broadcasting operations into Iran. Uh, it, last November, the government of Iran complained that the U.S. was trying to orchestrate a velvet revolution. One of the ways that he said this was being carried out was that the U.S. was inviting Iranian academics to so-called scientific seminars in Dubai and other places in the region. And they would show up for these scientific, you know, scientific academic seminars, and the classes would be, you know, how to use the media against the government, how to organize a protest. They were essentially class, classes run by the NED, the CIA, and other government agencies in how to overthrow your government when you get back home. Hardly normal fare at an academic seminar, although I don't get invited to many. Now, the protests in Tehran and throughout Iran no doubt have many sincere participants, undoubtedly with legitimate grievances and concerns. But these protests are not spontaneous, and the organizations behind them have received millions of dollars from the NED, from George Soros, and from other sources in the United States. Kenneth Timmerman, who, who uh, works with the International Republic, Republican Institute, which is one of the organizations under the NED, he announced there's talk of a green revolution in Tehran. He said this the day before the elections when the opposition was still saying we were going to win. So don't believe for a minute that these protests were spontaneous or that they were organized by a couple of activists with Twitter accounts. But let's move on from Iran for a minute to the United States. A lot of us have seen the call from this group called United for Iran that had, had some little get together last week in opposition to the uh, repression of the uh, Iranian government. Now, this website, I, I looked on their history. They came out of nowhere, and then the next day, they have protests in 105 cities with offices, phone numbers, faxes, emails, and staff. Now, I look around the room. There's a lot of activists here. I see a lot of collaborators, co-conspirators, a <laughs> couple of co-defendants. And we've built a couple of protests. Never in our career as, as activists have we seen an action go from nothing today to 105 protests tomorrow with offices and full staffs. Doesn't happen. Makes me wonder where those funds are coming from and who those folks are who are staffing the offices. I bet you a lot of them came from Washington, D.C., the National Endowment for Democracy. Now, it's, it's natural and it's important for us here in the anti-war movement that we have, some, we have some sincere and honest questions about the situation in Iran, and it's important that we continue to discuss and analyze. However, the bottom line, the song that keeps running through my head is, which side are you on? I say, not his. <laughs> the bottom line, is that it is our role as activists in the United States to focus on demanding that the government in Washington end the wars and occupations it is currently waging and that we launch no new attack against Iran. Our job is to let the Iranian people work their situation out for themselves and we stand firmly against sanctions, against war, against war propaganda and demand U.S. hands off Iran 
The people of Iran are more than capable of working this situation out for themselves. They were writing the Code of Hammurabi when my ancestors were still practicing cannibalism.